Hello. We're going to talk about secret sharing, slice formulas, and monotone wheel circuits. And this is a joint work with Benny Applebaum, Amos Weimel, myself, Nadi Peter, and Tony Pitassi. As a part of the ITCS conference. And throughout the talk, we're mainly going to discuss three models. The first one will be secret sharing schemes, which is an information theoretic cryptographic model. And the other two will be types of formulas or circuits that have special gates in them. That will be either slice gates or monotone real gates. We'll define everything uh, throughout the talk. And uh, the middle model here, the formulas over slice gates is a new model, which we introduced to connect between the secret sharing schemes and the monotone real gates. So our goal will be to obtain new lower bounds for recent techniques in secret sharing. In the past few years, there have been breakthroughs in the world of secret sharing, and we would like to show that there is a limit on how much you can improve secret sharing schemes without introducing uh, even more new ideas. And the way to do it will be to show lower bounds for a specific family of uh, monotone real circuits, and to show that they also apply to formulas over slice gates and then to secret sharing schemes with recent techniques. So we will do this by showing transformations from secret sharing to formulas over slices and then to circuits over real gates. And on the way, we'll get a new upper bounds. So we'll be able to take the recent year's upper bounds for secret sharing and show that they also apply to formulas over slices, and we'll get the, the first non-trivial upper bounds for monotone real circuits as well. So we'll first uh, introduce secret sharing schemes. So in this protocol, we'll have a dealer, which is randomized and it holds a secret S. And it wants to share it to N parties. And by sharing, we mean that it sends one message to every party. And we want the messages to follow these properties. The first one is that every authorized coalition of parties will be able to recover the secret. And we define this list of authorized coalitions in advance. And we would like that every unauthorized coalition of parties will learn nothing about the secret information theoretically. So we will call this list of authorized coalitions the access structure that we want to deal the secret to. And we notice that every access structure actually corresponds to a function that gives the grade one to all authorized sets and the grade zero to all unauthorized sets. So we'll be able to say that we want to share the secret according to some Boolean function. And the function will be monotone. Why is that? If we have a specific subset that can recover the secret, in this example, it's uh, the parties one, two, and three. And then of course, that if we add another party, party six here, the four of them together will be able to recover the secret. They just need to run their reconstruction algorithm with the shares of parties one, two, and three, and just ignore the share of uh, party number six. So this is what we mean by a monotone. And now we will talk about a basic property of secret sharing, which connects it to monotone formulas. As we said before, we would later want to connect secret sharing to formulas with special gates. So this is the first step. And this property will be closure over OR or AND gates. And by that, we mean that if it is easy to share the secret according to two functions, F1 and F2, then it will also be easy to share it according to their disjunction or to their conjunction. So first, the case of OR gates, if we want to share the secret S according to F, we can simply share it twice once according to F1 and once according to F2. And then if a party is authorized, if a coalition, sorry, is authorized by either F1 or F2, 
then this coalition of parties will be able to recover the secret, which is exactly the behavior that we want from an OR gate. And with an N gate, it's not much harder. If we want to share the secret, we will share a random secret R according to F1 and the secret R X or S according to F2. And then only if a coalition is authorized by both F1 and F2, it will be able to recover the secret S. And in both cases, the share size of F will be equal to the share size of the sharing that we did according to F1 plus the share size of F2. And the share sizes will be the important measure of complexity for us for secret sharing. And we will define this complexity as the minimal total length of all share sizes among all schemes that realize F. So just a few examples, uh, the secret sharing of uh, N out of N access structure where the only authorized coalition is all N parties that can be done with a total share size of uh, N bits. And we also know that uh, um, access structure, which is a bit more complicated, which is the threshold access structure where coalitions of size T are authorized, that takes a bit more uh, N log N bits. And that is the threshold uh, secret sharing schemes. That's the most common and uh, well-known uh, access structure that secret sharing schemes are used for. And this uh, originated this field uh, by Shamir uh, at 79. And uh, if we deal with general functions, then by the previous slide, we know that we can have a secret sharing schemes with total share size, which equals the formula size of F, but uh, that is very large, uh, two to the N. And it is a big open problem in uh, the field of information theoretic cryptography, whether we can do better than that, or more generally, what is the complexity of uh, general access structures? So two to the N was known since the work of Ito and Ali in 1987, and it took over 30 years until the big breakthrough by Liu Vaikutanathan and we to get to an exponent uh, below one of uh, 0 0.994. And since then, we have managed together with uh, Applebaum, Bimel, uh, Faras, and Peter in a line of work to get the exponents all the way down to 0 0.585 or uh, one and a half to the n. Uh, but uh, the thing is that the lower bound is still uh, not even quadratic. It's really far below the upper bounds. And the natural question to ask is, can the recent techniques achieve sub-exponential complexity? That means two to the n to the epsilon for some epsilon. And uh, the main result of this uh, work is that there exists a function in monotone NP for which the recent techniques cannot get us to sub-exponential complexity and we get stuck at two to the n over uh, log squared of n. And uh, our first step towards this main result will be the connection we talked about between secret sharing and slice functions. So slice functions are functions that are basically only interesting when their inputs are, are of Hamming weight exactly K. For lighter inputs, they will always output zero and for heavier ones, they will always output one. We can see this here uh, graphically. And formally a KL slice has L input bits. And it is only unconstrained when the Hamming weight of the input is of size exactly k. So formulas over slices are monotone formulas where each gate can compute some kl slice. And the weight k and the fan in l can vary between the different gates and they also can be unbounded. So this seems like a powerful model. And um, and then OR gates are also slice functions. OR gate is a one out of two slice and and is two out of two slice gate. So every monotone function has an FOS of size two to the N as monotone formulas do. And uh, the question is, can we do better with this model? Can these very powerful slice, uh, slices 
very powerful gates allow us to build smaller formulas for every function. And the answer is yes. And we reach this conclusion via the connection between formulas over slices and secret sharing. And the key observation which allows us to do this is that recent secret sharing schemes were all based on formulas over slices. And in more detail, all schemes had the following common steps. So first, we implicitly construct a constant depth formula over slices for a general function f. And then we realize each gate cheaply with a secret sharing scheme. So apparently slices can also be cheaply implemented for secret sharing since the work of LVW. And then we derive a secret sharing schemes via composition over end and or gate, similar to what we've seen a couple of slides ago. So the color corollary of this is that uh, just like uh, secret chain schemes, every function can be computed by formula over slices with the same complexity of uh, three halves to the n, um, which is very nice. And uh, we must say that um, the, this observation is not uh, completely obvious for some of the works and it took some work to understand that there is in fact implicitly a constant depth uh, FOS built in these secret sharing schemes. So moving on, and we do a recap to our general plan. We now uh, talked about the connection between secret sharing schemes and formulas over slices, and we would like to talk about the next connection to monotone real circuits and get closer to our lower bound. So to do so, we first define this computational model by Kudlak from 97. And here we will have circuits and formulas with special gates that take as inputs two real values and output a real value. And it is crucial that these gates will be monotone since if we allow them to be non-monotone and compute general functions over the reals, they will be too powerful and practically not interesting. So monotonicity here means that if we increase the value of both inputs of the gate, then its output also must increase. So if the input to a circuit is binary and its output is also binary, we say that this uh, circuit computes a monotone Boolean function and uh, the intermediate wires can take real values. That's the power of this model. And uh, this model uh, was thought of as an, it's, the motivation was lower bounds for proof complexity, the cutting planes uh, proof system. And we see here an example for such a circuit. It will have eight input bits. And uh, except for the top gate, all gates compute uh, just a summation over the reals. So the output of uh, this gate can be either zero, one, or two. And <clears throat> we'll define the top gate as a threshold gate. If uh, the sum of its input is equal or larger than four, it will output one, and otherwise it will output zero. And um, this is a pretty simple circuit, actually a formula that computes the threshold function of four out of eight, and all gates, uh, are monotone and the intermediate wires carry real values. So similarly to the previous circuit model with special gates we've talked about, the formulas over slices, here we'd also expect that uh, this model will be more powerful than the standard circuit model, since we have here more powerful gates. And by Rosenblum, this is in fact the case. And he showed that uh, monotone real circuits can easily realize slice functions. And as there are double exponentially many slice functions, uh, it means that they are more powerful than standard circuits. And um, his theorem says that every slice function over L bits can be computed by monotone real circuits of size O of L. And if we combine this theorem with the connection we've talked about between secret chain schemes and slice functions, 
we get as a corollary that every function can be computed by a monotone wheel circuit of size three halves to the n. And uh, this is in fact the first non-trivial upper bound we have for uh, this model, that means below two to the n. And now back to the big picture, we want to ask whether uh, we are done. And the answer for upper bounds is yes. We've seen that the recent upper bounds for secret sharing schemes also apply to formulas over slices. And then by the transformation of Rosenblum, they also apply to monotone wheel circuits. But uh, we are not done yet with lower bounds. And that is because the best lower bound for monotone wheel circuits we know of is 2 to the omega of n to the third by Yukna and Othberg. It's a generalization of the approximation method by Rosborov to real circuits. And we want to get to a much better lower bound of 2 to the omega of n over log squared n. And we would have liked to use a lower bound for monotone real formulas, which achieves exactly this by completely different techniques. It's now a generalization of the Karchman vigors and lower bounds based on communication games done by Krychek, and then the lower bound is by Gross and Pitassi. But the problem is that uh, the transformation of Rosenblum, of Rosenblum that takes formulas over slices outputs monotone wheel circuits and not monotone wheel formulas. So we cannot take this formula lower bound and uh, push it upwards towards our models. And uh, we will try to take anyway this lower bound and see that it will indeed help us in some way. So to do that, we'll need to understand better this connection between monotone real circuits or formulas and these communication games. So we'll start with a high level description. And we do this now before defining these games. It's just to understand the world we, we live in. So the first uh, thing to say is that monotone real circuits of size S for a function imply a real KW protocol for the same function of complexity proportional to the depth of S. And if we start with a monotone real formula, we can get a much more efficient protocol with complexity proportional to the logarithm of the size of the formula. So um, by Gauss and Pitassi, there is a function in monotone NP which requires a real KW protocol of length omega of n over log squared n. And because of this transformation from uh, monotone real formulas to protocols, we can take this lower bound and lift it exponentially to monotone real formulas. So it is left to show for us that uh, a circuit generated by the Rosenblum transformation we can also transform it to a real protocol with these proportions, like a circuit of size S can be transformed to a protocol of size log S. So of course, if the circuit is balanced, then its depth will be log S. But uh, the problem is that uh, the circuits are not necessarily balanced and we do not know how to balance monotone real circuits or monotone real formulas the same way that we do for uh, standard formulas. So we'll, we'll need to find a way to balance the protocol and not the formula itself. That was really high level, but uh, now we will define these protocols and things uh, should be clearer. So we now describe real karchmar wittgerson or KW protocols. And these protocols will be held between two parties. We'll call them Alice and Bob. And Alice holds a one input of a function f and Bob holds a zero input to the same function. The function will be monotone. And the goal of Alice and Bob will be to work together and to find an index i such that x in the ith place is larger than y in the ith place. And because the function is monotone, such an index must exist. And of course, uh, xi will be equal to one and yi will be equal to zero. 
So the way Alice and Bob approach this task is with the help of a less or equal oracle. It means that in each round of communication, both of them send independently a real number to the oracle, and the oracle responds with a bit, and this bit will be equal one if and only if a is smaller or equal to b. So we will now see a description of this uh, framework, an example, without a concrete function yet. We'll just say that um, in round one, Alice sends a message A1, a number which only depends on F and X, and Bob will send a number which only depends on F and its input Y. The Oracle will respond with a bit, let's say one. And then the next round, Alice and Bob will again send real numbers to the Oracle. This time they will depend also in the previous message of the Oracle. The Oracle will again respond, and this will go on and on until Alice and Bob are ready for a conclusion. Let's say, for example, that i equals seven, which means that x i equals one and y i equals zero. So uh, their challenge, of course, is that the, the messages that they send only depend on, on their input and they don't know the input of the other party. And now we'll see the connection of these circuits, of uh, these protocols to mount on real circuits. And um, the complexity of these protocols will be defined as the number of times the oracle is accessed, the number of rounds. And recall that we said that the monotone real circuits of a certain size S for a function will imply a real KW protocol of complexity which depends on the depth of the circuit. So we'll now see why that is so. And on the way, we'll show an example for such a protocol in a concrete function. And the function we will work with will be the one we've seen before, which is the four out of eight threshold function so we would like Alice and Bob to somehow use a monotone wheel circuit for this function in order to have an efficient real KW protocol. So let's say Alice holds a one input of F, which is X here that has four ones, which is above the threshold. And Bob holds a zero input of F, which has only three ones. And their goal is to find the index in which X equals one and Y equals zero. Here we only have one such index, which is a three, this one. So the way they will do it is by walking along a path in the circuit from the root to a leaf. And each time they will both evaluate a sub-circuit over their particular inputs. Their goal will be to maintain an invariant in which the sub-circuits they work on output a larger number on Alice's input than on Bob's input. So in the root, it, uh, it is clear that uh, that's the situation by the conditions we started with, that uh, the entire circuit outputs one on Alice's input and zero on Bob's input. So as a first step, they will both evaluate the left sub-circuit on their inputs. And so, the left sub-circuit outputs uh, A1 on Alice's input, which will be three, the, sums, the sum of ones below the sub-circuit. And when Bob evaluates the sub-circuit on its input, the outcome B1 will be two. So they will both send these outputs to the Oracle. And the Oracle here will respond with uh, zero because A1 is larger than D1. And because that is the situation, Alice and Bob will know that this is the right direction they want to go to, uh, hoping to maintain this invariant and reach a leaf in the end in which uh, the input of Alice will be larger than the input of Bob. So they will repeat this step, this step and again send to the Oracle the output of the left sub-circuit on their inputs. So here, uh, Alice will send the number two and Bob will also send the number two. So this time the Oracle will output one because A2 is less or equal to B2. And now Alice and Bob know that they went in the wrong direction because the invariant is not uh, maintained. So they know that they have to go to the right sub-circuit. 
So again, they will continue from there and send the output on the left uh, sub-circuit, which here is a leaf. And now Alice sends uh, one and Bob sends zero. And the uh, Oracle will respond with uh, zero and they will both know that they got to the right index. So in this example, by traversing uh, the circuit, we can easily see that the complexity of the protocol will equal the circuit depth. Again, the complexity of the protocol will be the number of Oracle access that uh, the parties Alice and Bob do. And uh, recall that we would like to get a better connection between uh, the size of the circuit and the complexity of the protocol. We would like to know when a circuit of size S implies a real KW protocol of complexity, which is logarithmic in the size of the circuit, even if the circuit is not balanced, which it is in the example we've seen. So one case in which this is possible is when the circuits we work with are separable. And what does that mean? We will say that the circuit is alpha K separable if in each rooted subgraph, there are k-special vertices such that in each cloud under them, there is at most an alpha fraction of the nodes in the circuit. And uh, there are at most an alpha fraction of nodes outside these clouds, these uh, subgraphs under the k-special vertices. So this is a strong global property which applies to each root of the subgraph in the circuit. And we would like Alice and Bob to use this um, special circuit in order to run their communication protocol more efficiently. And they will do that by um, using this property recursively. So we'd like to say that um, an alpha k separable monotone real circuit of size s for a function implies a real protocol of communication complexity, which is k times log with the base of the inverse of alpha to the size of s. So how do we do it? Uh, very similarly to before, we would like to traverse the circuit from root to a leaf. But uh, this time, instead of uh, sending the evaluation of a sub-circuit on one of the children of the nodes we are currently at, we'll send the evaluation over k sub-circuits. So due to the monotonicity property, we are guaranteed that in at least one of these uh, sub-circuits, the output of the sub-circuit over Alice's input will be larger than the output of it over Bob's input. So both Alice and Bob will send the outputs of these circuits to the Oracle, and the Oracle will reply at least once with a response that say, says that we can focus on this specific sub-circuit. And then Alice and Bob will know that they can work only on this sub-circuit and continue on and on until they get to a leaf. So in this protocol, in each phase, they run k rounds of the less uh, or equal uh, oracle. But in each such uh, phase, the size of the graph they work on is reduced by a factor of alpha. So we get exactly the communication complexity that we wanted. And so we conclude that um, if we get to a monotone real separable circuit, then we get all the properties that we need. And um, an observation that unfortunately we don't have the time to show, we did not dwell at all on the transformation by Rosenblum from uh, formulas over slices to monotone real circuits, but it's a relatively simple transformation and its output is not a general monotone real circuit, but a separable one. So the lower bound, which we will get on separable monotone real circuits, will also apply to formulas over slices. 
and then to seek a change schemes with recent techniques. So now we will uh, conclude everything. On the upper bound front, which was, um, which was simpler, we realized that the upper bounds for sequencing schemes of uh, three halves to the end also apply to the new model of formulas over slices and then to monotone real uh, circuits or even formulas. And on the lower bound front, we've seen that the, um, there is a function which requires separable monotone real circuits of size two to the omega of n over log squared of n. And due to the transformation by Rosenblum, this lower bound also applies to formulas over slices. And by our observation that in the heart of every recent sequence in schemes, there is a formula over slices with the same size, we can get uh, what we wanted, which is a lower bound for these techniques of uh, two to the omega of n over log squared of n. So uh, we've seen a new connection, new connections between the uh, secret sharing schemes and monotone complexity theory, which continues uh, this uh, long line of uh, works. And uh, some natural open questions uh, remained, uh, remain in, for each one of the three models we discussed. So for formulas over slices, um, the natural questions are, can we find better upper bounds or improve the lower bounds to be truly exponential? Now there's a gap between uh, the upper bound of three halves to the n and the lower bound, uh, which is uh, two to the n over a polylogarithmic factor. For monotone real uh, formulas, it will be interesting to see if we can separate the monotone real formulas from formulas over uh, slices. As for now, uh, the upper and the upper bounds are the same for them. And it will also be interesting to see if we can uh, independently balance monotone real formulas and not just communication protocols that rely on monotone real formulas. And uh, in the secret sharing front, um, there is still a, a big gap between upper bounds and lower bounds. And it will be interesting to settle it and perhaps bypass uh, the FOS uh, lower bounds with different techniques or improve the known lower bounds. So I hope you find these ideas to be interesting. And if you would like to see more details, I welcome you to see the written version of this paper. And thank you very much for listening.